you know, people always talk about offensive lines are bad. He said it's not the offensive line being bad. It's just the offensive line not being creative right or um, not giving that opportunity to gel. And people was out of spots a lot of times. You know, it takes an um, uh, offensive coordinator and an uh, offensive line coach to help build an uh, offensive line. He because that's what they did with Minnesota. You know, they just rekindled the line and did a little touching up here and there. But uh, he said, you know, uh, with improving the running game, which he felt that some of the backs didn't really get uh, the right touches or the right play calls for them. And um, just that he didn't want to down coaches. He just said, with a new system, things should go well. And, you know, uh, we pick up a back here, there, we should be better. But um, I just like the kid, Josh Allen, if uh, we was able to, uh, you know, get rid of Eli, I wouldn't mind him being our star quarterback. But, you know, that's their, that's what they're going to do. That's their team. Because he also made a statement the last time the Giants had the number two pick overall, they picked up a guy named Lawrence Taylor. So he's saying he's going best player available at the time. So I'm asking you this question, Ben. Who do you think is the best player? You know, because I don't think the quarterbacks are the best players. Uh, the quarterbacks are need players for a lot of teams. But who do you think is the best player available in the draft besides think, quarterbacks? Besides quarter, I think the best available player is Shaquan Barkley. The way that kid, That's his what, ability is amazing. Um, catching out of the backfield, right. pump returns, kick returns. He even did a couple halfback passes. So flat out talent. Uh, I'm I'm going with Shaqu- Shaquan Barkley. Now I don't know if he's probably not going to be the first. He may be the first running back picked, but talent is is just off the board with him. Right, right. Uh, okay, that's a good one uh, because you you see putting him in a in a lineup with Beckham and Shepard and Ingram. You know that's uh, then you got that young back uh, that would be great. But then people will say, well, shit, you ain't got to go first pick with a back because you got backs that's just as good as Barkley. You got uh, Sony Michelle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I see a kid back here from another school. I can't think of school right now. He looks like he's going to be a good NFL back. So backs are going to be there. Uh, I look at it like this. And that was a good point that was made about LT. I look at it like this. If we can get a dominated, a dominated linebacker, right, to help our linebacker crew out, because I feel our linebacker crew was weak. Because every time Goodman would go out, that was a middle linebacker from Clemson. It was the second year of the Giants. Every time he go out, that linebacker crew was missing assignments, missing tackles. You know what I'm saying? So if we can get another linebacker to go with him. I feel that uh, the defense will shine like it used to do before. And Josh Allen just, uh, this kid Allen just threw another touchdown, man. So uh, it's going to be hard, man. It's hard. I, I wouldn't want to be the giant uh, draft pool because it's going to be hard on who you really want to pick, man. Yeah, Definitely that. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this mock draft right now on on NFL <laughs> Network, and it's got, it's got right. you guys picking Shaquan Barkley. It's got Sam Darnold going yeah. one. Um, so. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad uh, because that'll make the offense even super, you know, with a, a revised Eli, and uh, you know, you know, the line getting better, you know. Because I look at it like this: our line was an old uh, then. It was yeah. some young guys, man. Right. So I, I look at it like this: they wasn't coached up. You know what I'm saying? I always say that in in my talk shows. Uh, if you ain't got coaches to coach your players, then you know, your player's just going to be average. You know, even though he's the number one, two, three draft choice, uh, a lot of times when you go to another level, you got to be coached up. If you're not coached up, then you're just going to be that same college guy that dominated college guy, you know? So uh, I just hope we got some good coaches coming in. Oh, one coaching move I like that we made, Ben, and I'm going to get off the Giants after this, is uh, getting Odell Beckham Jr., the wide receiver coach that he would groom off of due to the fact this cat grew up with his father and mother. So you know he got to be athletic because the mother was athletic, the father was athletic. So they had to meet on the athletic field, you know. So 
uh, a lot of people say they got him a babysitter. I wouldn't say much babysitter. They got him somebody he can trust to come to him and talk to him and tell him, you know, listen, it's all right to be rah rah pumped up, but let's be that leader. They was also talking about giving him the C to put on his uniform. They said if you make him the captain, maybe that will motiv- help him motivate other players because he's already trying to motivate Eli Apple, you know, by hitting him on uh, Twitter and telling him to, you know, stop listening to all these people, what they're saying, you know, get yourself together, get your uh, skills back where it used to be at and come back next year and let's do this thing. So he's already starting to grow up, man. But I don't really think he, uh, you know, a lot of people look at it, you know, like he was immature. I don't really think Beckham was immature. He was just a rah-rah guy, man. He just liked the game, you know? He he ain't the type of guy, do you hear about him getting in trouble in the streets? Do you hear no. about him doing other illegal things? All you hear about is stuff on the field. And on the field is the game that we play. And if, if a man can't enjoy playing ball on the field, this ain't, I mean, come on, get real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I feel about I, it. I think, I think he's, I think he's very emotional because he is passionate of the game. I would kind of compare him to, to Dez and Dez gets, put, right. he's get, he gets put in that negative light all the time. He's yelling on the sideline. He tells people to pass me the ball and then he drops it. Now, Odell Beckham doesn't do that. But, but Dez, I would compare them. The two of them is that the microscope's always on them. So, whenever they do anything, it's gonna be like, look what Odell Beckham did this time. Look what Dez did this time. And right. I think I think he'll grow up and mature. I think he's he's around. I think good people. He's a good kid. He's got massive talent. So it's 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 only it's only up for him. Hopefully, he can just stay healthy, and there won't be too many more injuries. Okay, I, I, I got a I got a question for you, Ben. It seems like I'm interviewing you, but you know how we <laughs> both are podcasters, so we both gonna bring something different to the table when you have an interview or talk to one another. Um, I was watching that in the, the NBA. Uh, I kind of like how they're doing it now. You know, uh, you pick the East team, you pick the West team, and then you just pick the captains of both uh, East and West, and then they pick players from both the you know, East and the West. To be on to make one or two, you know, make two squads, right? Okay. Right. Uh, what I was looking at was right. What in the hell was Steph Curry thinking about when <laughs> LeBron James was picking players? I don't know, man. I don't know what was think going through his head, but he he must be he must be thinking of something that somebody else doesn't know. Um, because he, no, he doesn't what he's have, thinking he about? can't match up. He, I, don't, I don't think his team's he, gonna match up good. He's thinking about. I'm the man. They made me the captain. When it comes down to shining at the end of the game, I'm the one that's going to shine. Because if he would pick Westbrook, you know Westbrook going to try to shine. See, LeBron James want to pick players. LeBron James wants to embarrass the other team. That's why he picked the way he picked. He wants to embarrass them. And um, he's trying to get all the muscle he got. Because if you look at him, all his big men are very athletic. They can dribble. They can post up. They can shoot from outside. You know, so uh, whoever they put on the on the court from the West, they're going to have a hard time, man, especially if you got four big men and Russell Westbrook out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, hey, it's going to be but, crazy. Now, the the, yeah, the, but, the Boogie Cousins uh, thing, though, kind of changes kind of changes things right. a tad bit with his injury. Well, not far as the All-Star, far as the Pelicans. Yeah. Far as the All-Stars, you know, Boogie was just, he, you don't know how much time he was going to get. In an all-star game. But as far as the Pelicans, oh, man, that just blew. They bubble right there, man. Uh, now you're going to see uh, AD going for 50, 40 every night now to make up that what they missing, you know. But they was gelling the good together, man. They showed a lot of breakdown highlights of him and Boogie Cousins, you know, sharing the ball, uh, feeding off each other. And then uh, one thing about Boogie, what they're going to miss, the guards can cut to the hole and get a pass and make an easy basket. So, uh, Boogie Cousins, I think he may just have messed up his money for next year. But, you know, next year was his, uh, yeah, the, you know, going to right. free agency, man. I mean, after this deal. season over. Yeah. Yeah, so he he may be a little messed up on that. He may have to sign a two-year contract with the Pelicans and, and get that money because, you know, 
if it's your team, you can get as much money as you want. You know, so this will take him away from other teams really giving him that real big contract. He gonna get a big one with the Pelicans, but how we know he wants to really stay there? You never know that. True. True. You know, yeah. Man. So what's been up with you, Ben? Man, I mean, you know, you just big time, you just guru. Uh, <laughs> you know, you doing your sports show now. You doing uh, uh, recruiting and promoting. And, I mean, hey, what's going on, man? You know, talk to your brother. You know, give me some <laughs> suggestions or hints. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm just I'm just uh, out here just trying to trying to promote and trying to uh, make money. Pretty much, I reach out to people. I ask them, hey, I can promote you on the show, and I'll do it on right. social media. Um, I only I only charge ten dollars a show, which is not a lot, and uh, most people do right. more. Most people do more than ten. You know, they do more than one show. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to grow this into something bigger than bigger than me and uh, hopefully make this like a full-time thing. But, um, yeah, and the music show. So I, I get music sent to me from um, Reflection Music Group. It's a record label. It's a hip-hop label. And, you know, I've been talking to them for a while, and they were like, we can uh, send you music so you can play it every week or play it whenever you get it so I, I, I just figured I just might as well do a show and just promote their music and hopefully that'll also be another avenue to, to try to get in the door somewhere so uh, that's that's pretty much what I'm what I'm, what I'm up to now doing a show every week now well, too so right that, that's big man but uh, you know the same the same ideas and plans you have uh, I have uh, some similar right it's just that I got a uh you know, wait till things get in line for my mom, you know, as far as uh, her getting better and start the rehab to, to make this thing happen, you know. Um, uh, I, I got very emotional Monday, you know, but um, after that, I, I cleared my head and um, I got with some people and um, we're about to make some things happen with my mother. So, you know, as far as her getting to that point where I got people working with her, you know, outside people coming in, visiting her, working with her, you know, um, then I can start focusing on what I want to do because, you know, just like what you're doing, I'm going to start doing things like remotes on the, road, on the road, man, you know, going outside of the house and do things. Um, I got a book signing that uh, I'm going to do a remote from the end of uh, February, right? Young lady I know, I wanted to bring her on today, but I think she have a kind of like busy schedule. She said she was only going to be able to give me like an hour and a half uh, early, you know, this part of the day, early in the day. But I told her, no, it would be kind of rough. I'll try, but it would be kind of rough. But uh, if I can get on later on this evening, it'll be good. But she got a serious book, man, you know, called uh, Fearless Passion. Uh, I don't know if you listened to my show last year when she did her book launch from yeah. the salon. I did a, a remote from there. Uh, yeah, man, she uh, she big time, man. Uh, and you know, she she know poetry. She just got a, a life story to tell about you know fear, fearless, and passion. You know, so um, it's gonna be a good thing, man. And you know, uh, like you said, like that link you had, and I made a copy of uh, the people that I want to start doing shows, right? Because. Now, uh, and one, I'm trying to build up X Squad. I ask them, do they want to be part of X Squad before I bring them over? You know what I'm saying? Right. If, if they don't, I don't force it or push it. But this is my thing. If you can, if we can bring more youthful and people that really want to be down to, uh, I'm looking for us sometime this year to have a studio of our own. That means we can, 24 hours, we can come on as X Squad affiliate dot com radio station you know what i'm saying so because we got a lot of djs and we got a lot of people that does podcasts and if we can do that maybe we can influence a lot of people that don't do live shows to do live shows because uh if you do a show 12 at night i mean you can do shows all during the morning if you do shows like that you will get heard and you will get more listeners and people following you because the west coast that's their morning time. i mean that's their late night time you know, somebody may want to sit back and listen to a show. I can do a show from 2 in the morning to 5 in the morning on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, you know. 
stuff like that. And you still have people listening to you. So 